So what are the best accessories you can get for the new 2021 iPad Pros or any iPad Pro from the last few years in 2021? I don't know, Val. Aren't you going to tell us? <laughs> so every product you're seeing in this video, we bought ourselves. There is nothing sponsored in this video. That's how we roll unbiased reviews based on real usage. That's what Monty told us to do. Are you okay, Monty? You just gave up, didn't you, puppy? <laughs> so in the next few minutes, we're gonna cover what we think are the best cases, keyboards, styluses, screen protectors, and chargers for the 2021 iPad Pros. Or the iPad Pros from 2019, 2020, as well as the iPad Airs, because they're all kind of the same design, same size. So, you know, that's how Apple rolls. Roll the review. When it comes to cases, there aren't many choices as you would have when compared to iPhone cases. The color selection is borderline terrible unless you like shades of gray, the occasional odd purple, as well as black. So in this section, we're gonna cover both slim and tough cases. Now for slim iPad Pro cases, our top pick eventually goes to the Spigen Rugged Armor Pro. Now this case is a bit more aggressive looking, so we'll include an alternative in a minute. This case has quite a bit of texture, so it's not gonna slip out of your hand as much as other products. It has two viewing angles, which is similar to the Apple Smart folio case and it has a place to keep your Apple Pencil. There are larger corners on the case that will protect the iPad Pro from the occasional drop, we'll say coming out of your bag. This slim case isn't going to offer a lot of protection in terms of waist plus height drops. We had no issues with device access and it worked with both screen protectors that we tested it with. Now if you're looking for a case that isn't as aggressive looking, check out the OtterBox Symmetry 360. This clear back case is actually going to be one of the tougher slim cases given the rigidity of the back. The downside for this product is that there are stiffer than average buttons and the magnetic flap isn't connected to the cover so it just kind of dangles there. When you've got it in stand mode. The last thing we'll say about the Symmetry 360 is that if you don't use an Apple Pencil, this case kind of won't penalize you for it, unlike some of the other cases that we use, like the Spigen Rugged Pro. Now, if you just need a cover, it's really hard to argue against Apple's own smart folio case. It's always very surprising to me that there aren't many knockoff brands that follow with Apple's mounting system. The equivalent products in terms of thinness and weight require you to slide your iPad, usually in a thin plastic sleeve. They're just so unbecoming. Now, the biggest downside for the Apple product is the lack of edge protection. You might be thinking, who really needs that? Well, at one point, I thought I didn't, but then I dropped my 2019 iPad Pro on tile and, well, I'm a little sad. Now. So if you're wondering what we're uh, drinking, do check out the video on our other channel, Cocktail Reviews A. It's a smoky old fashioned. What is this? That's another moft product. Why? Because reviewers say they're good. <laughs> gonna hide that in there and never look at it again. <laughs> when it comes to tough case, there's one word that comes to mind, torsion. That's the number one enemy of the iPad Pro when you, well, drop an iPad Pro in the case. Most cases aren't actually going to prevent your iPad from twisting in a drop. These tougher cases might. Now, as we said earlier, the Symmetry 360 with its rigid back will offer this protection. Now, in general, the tougher the thing is, the bigger it's gonna have to be. Tough iPad cases are no different. Every tough case we've used is a tank, but which product keeps your iPad safe while offering the best iPad Pro usage? Well, it's gonna be Mouse's iPad case. You can look at this product as a beefy, slim case, whereas in the other products, I think they start off as a block of plastic and then the companies just hollow it out to fit an iPad into it. Honestly, I'm still surprised there's uh, iPad cases that still come with built-in screens protectors. For the mouse iPad case, other than the bulk, the other thing you'll notice are the edges. It extends past the edge of the iPad and will be noticeable in the corners, but having this large edge will provide more protection than 90% of the cases that we've used. The edges along the corners, like their iPhone cases, are much higher than the edges along the long edges of the iPad. There are four different view angles for the iPad as the back of the case pops out like a kickstand. This setup offers a bit more stability than your typical smart folio cover. We had no issues accessing the ports and there's uh, well, a spot for the Apple Pencil. Now, now, if that mouse case isn't your cup of tea, do check out the Spec Procedural Pro. It's pretty bulky, it's pretty tough, it's got larger than average corners, and the back is fairly rigid. But the biggest downside about the Presidio Pro as a tough case is that the cover can't be latched onto the back of the case. So when you drop it, it might flap around and expose your screen to badness. So do you remember when the iPad first came out and you had that coworker who said they didn't want to get the iPad until they came out with a mouse and a keyboard for it and you made fun of him all the time? I do remember that. I've got him on the phone, I think what? I should apologize. Oh, frick. <laughs> hey, Dad? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. So keyboards and iPads are really a thing now, and if you get a good one, you might be able to get rid of your laptop, depending on how you use a laptop. Honestly, we only keep our machines around because of Final Cut Pro. 
Anyways, the best keyboard for the iPad is the Apple Magic Keyboard. It just works so bloody well. Leave it up to Apple to create a product that treats the iPad uniquely instead of trying to turn it into a laptop. The magic of the Magic Keyboard is the smart connector connection. <laughs> it's not wireless, so it's very responsive. If the Magic Keyboard is outside of your price range, do check out the Logitech Smart Folio, which is also a keyboard trackpad combination that uses a smart connector. The best thing about the smart connector connection is that the moment you need it, it's on. There's no lag. The Logitech Smart Folio is a bit bulkier than the Magic Keyboard, but, 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 will offer more protection for your device. Now, up until recently, we wouldn't even have mentioned the Bridge Pro Plus, but with their version 2.02 firmware update, they've brought native gesturing to the product, which makes the product a little more palatable from our perspective. However, our biggest issue is the overall design, as the Bridge Pro Plus tries way too hard to turn your iPad into a laptop. The top heaviness of the setup just makes the entire iPad feel very clumsy. Again, as we said, Apple treats the iPad with their Magic Keyboard as a unique device. Being able to pull the iPad on and off the keyboard easily instead of trying to shovel the device and a been to the hinge. Oh, it's just so terrible on the Bridge Pro Plus. It's just, it's a deal breaker for us. Now, if you're concerned about the wear and tear of the Magic Keyboard, this is ours after 13 months of daily usage. Doesn't look too bad given how much, um, how much we've used it. It doesn't really look that bad. Now, other products that have trackpads include this Moff Tripful product. Unless you've ever typed in your life, the pint-sized keyboard with corresponding tiny, tiny trackpad isn't worth the hassle, even though it's only $40. Now, there are a ton of other keyboard products, but they don't have trackpads. And if you're more interested in those products, well, we've done a massive roundup for those products, so do check that video out. The last thing we want to mention for this part of the accessory thing is that if you want a bit of protection for your iPad, then you can definitely get one of these products from Pataka or from Cover Buddy, they're very thin cases and they just wrap around the entire iPad bit and they still allow you to use the Magic Keyboard without having to sacrifice, you know, the ability to connect to it. Like, it's minor amount of protection that they'll provide. They'll look kind of cool, like if you get the blue carbon fiber one from Attacka. So do check out that review if you want to know more about these products. And the last thing I want to say about this Magic Keyboard is that this product will actually have a lot more longevity than all of these products because Apple generally doesn't change the form factor of their products that much. And given that there's no edge protection for this thing, they don't have to kind of figure out, you know, how to attach it it's like this. Bridge product is not going to work well when they make the iPad significantly thicker. Whereas in the, uh, whoops, the Magic Keyboard, because it attaches magnetically through the back, it's going to work well. Like this product works well with the iPad Pro from 2019, 2020, the iPad Air, and the new iPad 2021. So like this thing is more expensive, but the longevity of the entire design is, you can't beat that. Um, so just needed to mention that if you were on the fence about buying this product. Now, when it comes to stylized, there was actually one product that surprised us. This one. Did you say Styli? Styli, I did. Shouldn't it be styluses? It could actually be both. Styli. Styli. That sounds way cooler, actually. <laughs> styluses, yeah. The plural of stylus is styli. Not like that, though. <laughs> Out of the half dozen or so styli we tested for the iPad Pro and other iPads, the clear winner is the Apple Pencil. Again, it just works, but it is also the most expensive product out of the group, so yay, Apple Tax. If you're looking for an alternative to the Apple Pencil and you spend time drawing on your device, the only alternative is the Adonit Note Plus. Why? Because it's the only other pencil that measures pressure, but will only work with select apps, which is a minor hassle. Now, if all you're doing is taking notes and don't care for the pressure sensitivity, you can actually get away with one of the random Amazon Apple Pencil lookalikes. Now with all our accessory roundups, we generally go with one Amazon product and we treat that as like the base. And I mean the base, like the absolute rock bottom for our reviews. Like for the keyboard thing, the base was this product and it was borderline oh, terrible. This keyboard is so bad. But for the uh, Apple styluses or Apple style lie comparison, we went with this rando Amazon brand, and this thing for note taking is actually really good. 
But the problem is that because it's from a random Amazon manufacturer, it might be hit and miss. We'll include the link for the one we got in the description section below. The best thing about the random Amazon brand is that it attaches like a normal Apple Pencil, which means it will work with most cases. Now other products like the Logitech Crayon may look cool, but are annoying to keep track of. In fact, trying to find a case that allows you to store the Logitech Crayon is going to be fairly tough because, well, not many manufacturers make one for the Logitech Crayon. Now, unlike the Apple Pencil, which charges wirelessly through the iPad, you have to charge your rando uh, Amazon Pencil using USB-C. So I guess you can't get everything at a really cheap price. So those are our recommended style life. If you need more information about each product specifically and some of the other note-taken products that we tested, do check out our in-depth review for that. So if you appreciate how we're doing our reviews and you wanna know what we are drinking, I'm all out apparently. Uh, check that video out on our other channel, Cocktail Reviews A. And if you appreciate, again, how we do our unsponsored reviews. Again, we didn't take any money to do this video, so get your stuff through our links because that is the best way to keep us unsponsored. Now, screen protectors are a funny product for iPads. Basically, you get two kinds. You got film versions, which is on this iPad Pro, or you got glass versions, which is on this iPad Pro. Now, there are the matte versions, the glass versions, the matte ones kind of, their selling point is that they mimic paper. Now the ones that mimic paper will take away from the clarity of your iPad screens and given that the 2021 12.9 inch iPad Pro has a fancy new micro LED screen, muting that technology might actually be what Val? A cardinal <laughs> sin, a tech cardinal sin. On the other hand, if you draw a lot, having your iPad pencil slide frictionlessly across the glass screen while trying to be the next great artist is going to be annoying. When it comes to glass, from our perspective, we care more about the installation process when it comes to iPad screen protectors over the quality of the glass. Usually it's the other way around for iPhone screen protectors, but given how gigantic these sheets of glass are and given that the wear and tear of the iPad screen is, isn't as great as the iPhone screens, having decent installation tools will make a world of difference. Our go-to pick is going to be the Spigen Glaster Easy Fit. Make sure it's the Easy Fit, not the Glaster Slim, because with the Easy Fit, it comes with an install frame, which makes the installation process foolproof. The cherry on top of the Spigen Glaster Easy Fit is that the glass that they use is above average when compared to some of the of the products that we've used. Now you could try other brands from <laughs> way back there, but seriously, none of them are as easy to install as the Glaster Easy Fit. Some of those products literally just gave you a sheet of glass and the install uh, tools for a iPhone screen protector, whereas in the Spigen version, it makes it so easy to install. It's like going to a car detailing shop to have the exterior of your car waxed and the tenant basically just throws you a bunch of wet wipes. Now one more thing with glass screen protectors is that they add a bit of thickness to your iPad. So when you go with tight fitting products like Apple smart keyboards as well as uh, their smart folios, there is a slight gap. It's not noticeable, but it is there. So if you are very particular about how your accessories fit with your device, glass screen protectors might be a deal breaker for some. For this 11 inch iPad Pro, we do have one of Bridges glass screen protectors. And even though they claim it's glass, it scratches like it's plastic. This Bridge product is a good alternative if you're looking for something that doesn't add to the thickness of the iPad. Now, as we said earlier, people who like drawing are gonna wanna get a matte screen protector. Unless you were born in a time when you've never put pen to paper, drawing on the glass screen of an iPad with an Apple Pencil just feels awkward. There are little nubs that you can buy for pennies, but it doesn't feel the same as using a stylus on a matte screen protector it actually feels like you're erasing your screen the entire time, which is basically the opposite feeling that you want when you're drawing. It's like getting drunk on water. That would be awesome. It's also like being healthy during a cheat meal, like eating salad for your cheat meal. That would be terrible. It's like getting stronger while losing muscle mass. That would actually be great. Why? I wouldn't have to buy new clothes. I would just have to wear the clothes that I wore when I was growing up. Vintage, yo. Like what though? Like this shirt. You wore a casino shirt when you were in your childhood? John Esquaga's Nugget from Reno. 30th anniversary in 1985? How old were you? I was four. <laughs> it's like a dress on me. <laughs> okay, 
Enough about silicone numbs. Over the last 12 months, we've cycled between five different matte screen protectors, which include products from Paperlike, iCares, Belmond, Moshi, and some rando Amazon brand. Now over this time period, we've noticed that the matte screen protectors scratch much easier than glass, are bastions for face grease, and depending on how fresh your screen protector is, will grind away at a few layers of dead skin cells on your fingers. Also, the screen protectors would show wear and tear on high traffic areas. This was most prominent with screen protectors used by Aaron as he gamed his life away. <laughs> Now we'll be honest with you, we found ourselves getting used to whatever matte screen protector we were using at the time. The only time we could notice a difference was when we placed two different screen protectors on the same iPad. We did that for our in-depth paper-like review, so check that out if you want the full story. Now Aaron and I laid out all the different screen protectors that we had and tried to find which screen protector had mimicked the best feel of a ballpoint pen, a gel ink pen, and a felt marker. We did this test with both the Apple Pencil and the Adonit Note Plus. In general, we both liked the matte screen protector that had more friction, which was the Belmont screen protector. It mimicked the feel of writing on loose leaf as well as cardstock. For the ballpoint pen, which has a larger tip, the paper-like screen protector worked well. With the 0.5 tipped gel pen, the random Amazon brand did almost as well as the Belmont screen protector. Now when it comes to gaming, using rougher screen protectors isn't as great because there might be too much friction. When it comes to gaming, Aaron actually prefers using the Moshi Visor AG. Now the last thing we need to mention is the fact that every one of these screen protectors will take away from the clarity of the iPad screen. In general, the rougher the screen protector, the more clarity loss from our observations. Now I'll be honest with you, I have generally mixed feelings about having the 12.9 uh, inch iPad Pro with an amazing screen having a matte screen protector because, you know, it's the screen is so pretty but you put a Mac screen protector and it just looks terrible. But as much as I love tech, I like to write and noodle. So as we said before, the Belmont felt best during writing or drawing. But again, you won't feel the difference unless you've got two screen protectors side by side. But if you want the best of both worlds, having a crisp screen when you watch movies on your giant iPad and having a bit of friction when you're noodling, seriously consider getting the Moshi Visor AG because it's removable and washable. So you get that option if you don't want to fully commit. Like seriously, I've been using this product since the iPad 2s and it generally works very well. Removable, washable, like seriously, it's awesome. On to chargers. Now Apple includes a 20 watt charger with the iPad, but if you're like Aaron who needs to be in a space where every other empty socket needs to have a charger in it, then you'll need either the PowerPort 3 Nano Compact Travel Charger or the Spigen Power Arc Station. We've been adding to our collection of 20 watt chargers over the last few months, and we can say that both these chargers charge as fast, if not slightly faster, than Apple's own charger. And the best part is, they cost a few dollars less. Now between the two, we'd actually go with the Anchor product, because it keeps both outlets free for something else to be plugged in. The Spigen product is just a bit bigger, so you'll always have to keep it in the bottom socket. Now between the two, we'd actually go with the Anchor product, this one, because it's just a tad smaller, it's actually like one of the, it's actually the same size as an iPhone 5 watt charger. Both plugs are small enough to keep the other socket free, but from a form factor perspective, it's just a bit smaller. The Spigen product is just a bit bigger, but from a portability perspective, the plugs fold into the charger, so it's not gonna get caught in whatever satchel you decide to put the charger in. So that's all we got for this accessory round. No questions, comments, leave them down there. If you appreciate how we do our reviews and the amount of money that we spent to do these videos, get your stuff through our Amazon links. If you want to take your support further, Val, what can they do? You can support us through Patreon. And you should do that because Monty is checked out completely. He needs help. Anyways, first time watching one of our videos, click subscribe, hit the notification bell so that every single time we come up with an unbiased review for products, you get notified. Thanks for watching. Mm.